about uh, your roots. You're half Japanese, so you you're already Syrian. So I f yeah think you feel like you're at home. But um, I think you uh, experience a different way because you were born in Japan and moved back to the States at the age of one. one. Mm -hmm. So um, do you think you have a Japanese side of background? because you left Japan so early. Yeah, it's it's tricky. I guess that yeah. being half of something, I, I'm only, I mean, I'm quarter Irish, quarter German, and half Japanese. I'm more Japanese than I am anything else. And being raised in the States, I guess a big thing that is America in my mind, and, and the positive, to, to speak positively about America, because usually most people don't, sometimes I don't as well. But what's cool about the States is it is built of different countries, of people from all around yeah. the world. Yeah. And I've always felt, more Japanese than anything else. And I, unfortunately, I can't speak Japanese. I should be able to speak it. I spoke it as a kid. And I think that in my life, I'm always trying to trace the roots of that and put more of that into myself. Like all my, I know tattoos are kind of good and bad thing in Japan. Originally a good thing, originally a revered form of art from what I've read that became something that people are more kind of afraid when they see it. But my tattoos are all traditional Japanese tattoos in traditional places. They're, they're kind of flaky and crazy looking because I just got them touched up. That's what all this flaking is. But this, this tattoo is actually the story of the samurai Watanabe no Tsuna battling the demon Ibaraki at Rashomon Gate. It's a story that I was told as a kid from my mom. It's a story that I was familiar with. And this is, uh, this is the Ascending Dragon by uh, Kitagawa Utomaro, the, the, the guy who did all the old geisha paintings. So these are both duplicates of ancient pieces, and I'm only going to stick with traditional Japanese in traditional places. And then I just got the, uh, the Japanese Enso. As you can see, it's peeling. It's, it's the... Uh, a lot of Japanese artists would practice drawing the Enzo every day as sort of a spiritual exercise. Mm -hmm. And it represents everything and nothing at the same time. And the, I, I love that the void is also one of the descriptions of this. Because um, Isha got me into reading like Nietzsche and, and George Bataille. So they, they always refer, reference the void a lot. So it's, it's cool because it's something that's supposed to be perfect but also imperfect at the same time. There are some ancient Japanese Enzos that are drawn that are kind of weird amorphous shapes and some that are perfect circles and mm -hmm. it's supposed to be done in like one stroke so a lot of fun meanings in, in all the tattoos. It's so funny that we learned the Japanese Yeah, he knows a bit much better than <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought you spoke Japanese because your pronunciation is very natural. Mm, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Thank it's you. Not yeah. like, you know, American people say like... Arigato. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I spoke it as a kid up until but, about but like three or four. But you know, song, Kiwitsu de Gomen, that's... Kiriste gomen, but it's supposed to be kiriste gomen. Kiri, you know, kiri, yeah, I always say kiriste gomen. <laughs> but then hearing people in the States talk about it, I was like, what's kirisute gomen? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I think it's thanks, thanks to my mom. Because when, uh, when I was three or four, I used to speak fluent Japanese with my mother. Oh, yeah? And then as soon as I started the American school system, I lost oh, so all like, of it. Mm. So when I'm here, I, I you know, the stage stuff, I, I try to do most of the talking in Japanese. Actually, every country we go to, I try to do the talking in their language. So I think that's probably why I can only speak one language, because I can do 20 words of 20 different languages. So do you, uh, Dave, Michi have Chinese characters? It doesn't Michi? have Kanji. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 don't you know know to, I don't know how to oh, write the Kanji. Okay. But I do love the meaning, though, because uh, Ki means like undefinable. And then, undefinable. Yeah, where it almost doesn't have a definition, the word Ki, at least what I've seen, and then Ichi is one. So like undefinable one, which I really liked a lot. And it's actually the name of an uncle who is deceased. So I, I thought it was nice that I was able to carry on that name. And my dog has a Japanese name too. Yeah. Miyuki chan. <laughs> yep. She's a French bulldog. Uh, yeah, well, Big dog. He used to have an Akita dog. Mm, yeah. yeah, our producer Draymond, David Draymond, owns an Akita. His name's oh, yeah? Gabriel. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask about that. So David Draymond mm. gave you a lot of vocal lessons. Yeah, he was yeah. um our. He's uh, one of my favorite vocalists. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, he's He'll be awesome. very happy to hear that. I'll, I'll, I'll mention. Um, yeah, he's an amazing person. Um, he was very hospitable. Mm -hmm. He allowed the four of us and our engineer all to live in his house for two months straight. Mm -hmm. So oh. it was all of Trivium, our engineer, David, his wife, and his three dogs all under one roof for two months straight. Um, he was the most hands-on producer we've ever had. He was able to 
be constructive with guitars, solos, lyrics, vocals. But the biggest thing for me was him being a vocal coach. He was the best vocal coach I've ever had. He showed me proper breathing technique, how to take care of myself, when to cut myself off from food, whether laying down to go to sleep or preparing to play a show. So he really helped change the way I live on the road and the way that I take care of myself so that way I can always sing as good as I can. This record, Vengeance Falls, there isn't, there is zero auto-tune, there is zero vocal line, there's zero digital correction of anything vocally. He just, yeah, he just, he just made me do it for real and he showed me how to do it for real. That was very cool. Sometimes I feel your vocal style is in the line of in Elvis, Doors, <laughs> Danzig. Awesome. Thank you. I, I love that. Thank you. I, I love Elvis and I, I love. Yeah. yeah. So, what were you first by Danzig too? Um, no, not, not, not until later on in my life. I mean, interestingly, we met David. We were playing in 2005 with Chicago House of Blues. We were opening, we were second to five for Danzig, and David was at that show. And that was the first thing we ever saw Trivia, and we became a fan from that. Um, the first time I ever saw Disturbed, he was opening for Danzig. He was first of third. It was Danzig, Six Feet Under, Disturbed opening in Orlando, Florida. And so Danzig keeps bringing everything back together. So thanks to Danzig, like I, we met David the first time, the second time, and then we covered two Misfits songs on our new record. Um, Elvis, I, I do some solo acoustic shows every once in a while, and I always play Elvis Can't Help Falling in Love. Oh, that's and nice. That's, that's why I sing. sing. That's I kind of like it. <laughs> and then um, I'll do stuff like Roy Orbison and Johnny Cash, because I've got yes. that low voice. Deep, and, deep voices. Yeah, it's it so easy for me to sing like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, and my voice feels like it keeps getting lower and lower and lower. <laughs> and, uh, but David's helped me expand it higher. On Vengeance Falls, there's some of the highest notes I've ever hit and some of the lowest notes I've ever hit. But I appreciate that comparison. Thank you. Oh, yes. No one's ever told me that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Tyler. So, could you uh, give a message to Japanese fans? To yep. the camera, please. To all our Japanese fans, thank you guys so much for everything you do, for all your support. We love being here. One show is not enough, so please spread the word of Trivium so we can keep coming back. Arigatou gozaimashita. Kyotsuke de ne. Matane. It's really good job. It's really good. It's really good. It's really good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Arigato, arigato. Thank you for the omiyage. I really appreciate it. <laughs>